Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the demolition process on time lapse. Put a few subliminal messages in there too. Now it's time to take the design from paper to dirt. Let's get busy. What we were not able to capture on time lapse was this end of the garden, which is where I would take my breaks. And where we also removed some very old growth Algerian ivy that has been plaguing this neighbor for years. I use the word plaguing because it's a notorious rat den and all rodents in general love hiding out in it. So don't plant Algerian ivy. You'll never get rid of it, unless you're me. The neighbor's garage wall facing into the garden is now free of Algerian ivy and freshly painted black for our mural. It was the artist's request that we prime it black before he gets started. Wow. And how did we get permission from the neighbor to paint his garage wall any color we wanted? Well, we removed his Algerian ivy free of charge permanently. All right, the first thing you want to do is stake out a footprint of all the hardscape elements of your design. All you need for this are some garden stakes, some twine, a hammer, and your measurements. In this staked out area, you can see I've already started using some of the many pavers that were removed from the old design. I think it's gonna look pretty good. I just need to figure out some way to jazz it up a bit. Whatever I ultimately end up doing, I'll be using this paver sand to properly set these into place so that they're level and sturdy. Also a note, when you're digging around, be careful of uh, things like this, utility lines. You don't wanna dig up something that you're not supposed to. As you can see, I've staked out my fancy bar pergola. Staking out the garden allows you to see how everything's going to fit into the space. Make sure you have enough room to maneuver around things. Don't rule out having to make some adjustments during this period. This is one of the most exciting stages. <laughs> Looking at my design, I know I need two 10-foot 4x4 redwood posts. Why redwood? It's the construction standard for weather-exposed outdoor structures. It will far outlast any other of the softer woods like pine or fir. I need 10-foot 4x4 posts because I intend to sink two feet into the ground. When selecting your lumber, have somebody assist you so that you get dried or cured wood. Wet or green wood still has the potential for warping once you get it home and it dries out, thus causing issues for you during construction. I always recommend letting your lumber dry out for at least 48 hours before you seal it or before you begin to build with it. On a flat surface, flip your 4x4 one side at a time to make sure it stays flush with the floor and look it up and down to be sure it's not already warped. The next step is to water seal your wood to help preserve it. Now this is probably the easiest but most important part of this project. You'll need a can or jug of water seal. I'm using Thompson's. This is a low VOC, low odor formula and it's water-based which is a lot easier to work with than an oil-based product. You'll need something to pour that into, a paintbrush to apply, uh, a rag for cleanup, uh, I always like to have painter's paper nearby, and a fine sandpaper or a sandpaper sponge for cleaning up the wood surface. Let's get started. Step one, provide a good working space for yourself that will facilitate your work. Step two, briefly prepare a wood surface. Many times lumber will come with black rub marks from the bundle straps or forklift. Use a fine sandpaper or a sandpaper sponge to remove the scuff marks. You can also do away with any little slivers of wood sticking out at this time. Make sure and brush away the debris. Step three. Shake Thompson's water seal for two minutes. Step four, pour seal into container. Step five, apply to all four sides of post, top and bottom. One coat, no more. Check for drip marks. And finally, let dry for 24 hours. Repeat once a year. Hey look, how convenient. This one's ready to go. Let's sink this puppy. Okay. So there's a couple of different ways to sink a post that I know of. The first way is to buy this handy piece of hardware and dig a hole, not very deep, sink this part into the ground and fill it with cement. And then you attach the post to this bracket here using these holes. And that allows for a gap right below the post so that the post is never sitting in standing water. Makes sense, preserves your post. However, I'm a traditionalist. Call me old fashioned but I'm going to sink a post today just as my father taught me how to sink a post and his fathers before him. I believe there's something to be said about really sinking your wood deep. Today I'm going to show you how to optimize the life of your post without having to purchase 
an additional hardware per post. Okay, for this project, you'll need a pair of gloves that you can get messy, a post hole digger, a shovel, a bag of cement, some scrap lumber, definitely a level, and a tamping device, which I'll explain later. This is my old chin-up bar. A water source, a tub to mix in, and uh, something we call a collar, which I will also explain later. We want to sink our post two feet deep. Add an additional two inches to that to allow for dry cement at the bottom of the hole. Then when we put in the wet cement, it'll seal the bottom of the post. Add two inches worth of dry cement to the bottom of the hole. Next, place the post in the hole. Then add water to the concrete mix. Enough to get it moving, but not too soupy. Then pour the concrete into the hole and tamp as you go along. When you are adding the concrete, you will want to keep checking that your post stays level. Temporarily support the post to keep it level using your scrap lumber. And finally, build a collar. This is the part that will lengthen the life of your post significantly. This will prevent water from collecting and staying near the post, thus preventing decay over time. And that's all there is to it. I'll sink another post over there, squaring it off to the first one, and I'll start building a pergola, among other things. Thank you for watching Urban Dirt. We'll see you in the mud.